Hey guys, we continue making characters entirely in Inkscape. Last time it was Finn from Adventure Time. And now I want to crank up the difficulty just a bit and show you a couple of cool things while I draw Jack from Samurai Jack. Ok, let's begin. Just like I did with the previous video with Finn from Adventure Time, I want to make a quick model to grasp the different proportions and shapes the character is made of. And luckily I have this particular reference with Jack from a pure front view, and I'm gonna use that to get the shapes. The main difference between Jack and Finn is that the design of Finn is the body. The clothes are stuck to the body, they have very little weight in the overall design, and Jack on the other hand, just like many other cartoon characters that use this simple flat style, is defined by the clothes it wears. So basically, the clothing is the character. And when this happens with a character, you have to analyze not only the body shapes and proportions, but also the clothing shapes and proportions. And that's what I did here. Notice that I created a rectangle for the torso and another rectangle for the belt area where the clothing is more tight. And I didn't even bother with the legs, since they are gonna be hidden by the tunic he's wearing. It's very common for cartoon characters for the design to be defined by the clothing they wear. This is especially common for girls that wear dresses that change the body shape. But males can also wear clothes that do this. So keep that in mind when analyzing this type of cartoons. Going to the next stage, this time the stick figure is gonna be closer to an actual gesture drawing. Sometimes with simple cartoons, like in the case of Finn, you can get away with a simple stick figure, but sometimes you need something more. Here I thought that it would be more helpful to indicate very roughly the clothing of the character, since that's basically what the character is. This way I can design the pose with more information, and of course pre-visualize the final drawing better. I want you to notice how I made this straight line on one side. This is something that's gonna result in a better looking pose in the end. The same with the sleeves. They are very long and they could easily cover something important, but they don't. Or the belt. Notice how it's such a big area, yet it's completely visible, and that helps the character to read better. All of this is because I planned everything super fast with a couple of lines during this stage. I'm sure that here in the final design you can almost see the character. I might need to adjust a few things once I have the completed drawing like I did in the previous video with Finn, but the foundation is here. Now comes the fun part. Ok, let's start with the head. I love making the head first, because I think that it gives you something tangible at the moment of building the rest of the body. To me it's easier and less intimidating to make the rest of the body if I have one of the most important parts finished, even if I have to adjust it later on to fit with the body. And this is something you can only do with the head, since it's the most self-contained part of the body. As far as the head itself, it's super easy to make, just like many other shows that use this graphical flat style, Jack's head is super simple, and I love that, it works perfectly with the character. By the way, you might be wondering why I'm working with this orange background. Well, it's simple. The color scheme of Jack is basically based on white. So any white or greyish white background won't do it. A light orange was pleasant to me and made everything clearly visible, so I went for that. In Inkscape you can change the color of the canvas in the document properties dialog that you can find in the file menu. Now for the body. Whenever you're working with vectors, you have to start with the silhouette of a shape you want to draw, and then refine from there. So the very first thing I did here is to start with the tunic, which is also the main shape of the body. I'm using the gesture as a guide to know where each shape goes, 
not only where each anatomical shape goes, but also where each shape of the overall design goes, like the sleeves, the bulk of the upper part of the torso, or the bottom of the tunic. And now you know why a simple stick figure wasn't enough for Shaq. It would have been harder to keep in mind the location and proportion of these shapes at the moment of making the final drawing. Of course, like I said before when working with vectors, you have a bit more freedom at the moment of adjusting shapes once they are done. But even then, this freedom is limited. If the shapes are all messed up, completely out of proportions or making a bad silhouette, there is very little you can do after the drawing is made. The gesture, or in our case I guess it will be more of a pseudo gesture, provides a strong foundation to build the character upon, and while having the freedom to change and manipulate shapes after they are done, it's not unlimited like I just said. If a character is built upon a strong foundation, then you can always make minor adjustments at any moment without messing the character. To me this is the key advantage of working with vectors. To me this removes the pressure of the need to draw everything right in one go, and it's just more fun, which is the ultimate goal of drawing. Now of course there are a lot of drawbacks to drawing like we are doing now, entirely with the mouse and keyboard. And one of those drawbacks is that it's way harder to draw in 3D, to draw with volume. The tools a vector software has were not designed for drawing in 3D. To make a more traditional figure drawing, it will be sort of a pain. This is why I'm sticking to drawing mostly this type of modern, flat, graphical cartoons, because they work better with the tools Inkscape has. In fact, Jack is about the limit of what I would consider to draw completely with vectors using the mouse and keyboard. Anything else with a bit more volume, like a cartoon you will see in an anime or in a show like Avatar, you're better off just making a quick sketch with pencil and paper and then importing that sketch to a vector software like Inkset, and then finish it there. I want to let you know that just like with the previous video, I'm gonna make available to download the completed SVG file and also the real-time hour-long version of this illustration. It's 100% free, I'm gonna leave you a link to the download in the description below. So if you're interested in following along or study what I'm doing better, make sure to check it out. and we are getting closer to the end. Now what I'm doing here is making some last minute adjustments, finding small things that are wrong and fixing them one by one. Now you can be in this stage for a long time, but I wanted to be as concise as possible, and that cost me a couple of details that I didn't spot it, and now that I'm noticing them they are bothering me, but I think most of the job is done. Anyway, hopefully this video was of some use for you. I love making these commented time lapses and sharing what I've learned. I would love to hear your requests. Is there any character that you would like to see recreated in Inkscape? Leave a comment below and I'll promise I'll do what I can to make it eventually. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for more characters and other Inkscape tutorials. And since you're there, a like will be immensely appreciated. Well, have a great day. Bye.